Societies for Moral Reform by James Henley Thornwell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A preamble and resolution have been submitted by the Executive Committee of the American Temperance Union to the General Assembly for its adoption, to which may be added an address of the New York City Temperance Society, organized on Christian principles, transmitted to the Assembly by a committee of the Society. Your committee would recommend, in reference to this whole subject of temperance societies and all other secular institutions for moral ends, the adoption of the following minute. The Church of Jesus Christ is a spiritual body to which have been given the ministry, oracles, and ordinances of God for the gathering and perfecting of the saints in this life to the end of the world. It is the great instrumentality of the Saviour, through which, by His eternal Spirit, He dispenses salvation to the objects of His love. Its ends are holiness of life, to the manifestation of the riches and glory of divine grace, not simply morality, decency, and good order, which may to some extent be secured without faith in the Redeemer, or the transforming efficacy of the Holy Spirit. The laws of the Church are the authoritative injunctions of Christ, and not the covenants, however benevolent in their origin and aim, which men have instituted of their own will, and the ground of obligation which the Church as such inculcates is the authority of God, speaking in His word, and not pledges of honour, which create, measure, and define the peculiar duties of all voluntary associations. In this kingdom of God, the holy scriptures are the only rule of faith and manners, and no church judiciary ought to pretend to make laws which shall bind the conscience, or to issue recommendations which shall regulate manners, without the warrant, explicit or implied, of the revealed will of God. It is hence beside the province of the church to render its courts, which God ordained for spiritual purposes, subsidiary to the schemes of any association founded in the human will, and liable to all its changes and caprices. No court of Christ can exact of his people to unite with the temperance, moral reform, colonization, or any other society which may seek their aid. Connection with such institutions is a matter of Christian liberty. Their objects may be, in every respect, worthy of the countenance and support of all good men, but in so far as they are moral and essentially obligatory, the Church promotes them among its own members, and to none others does its jurisdiction extend, by the means which God has ordained for the edification of his children. Still, in the exercise of their Christian liberty, as good citizens, as patriotic subjects of the state, from motives of philanthropy and from love to God, Christian people may choose to adopt this particular mode of attempting to achieve the good at which all moral societies profess to aim. They have a right to do so, and the Church, as long as they embrace no false principles and countenance no wrong practices, cannot interfere with them. Recognizing these propositions as the truths of the Word of God, this General Assembly, as a court of Jesus Christ, cannot league itself with any voluntary society, cannot exact of those who are subject to its discipline to do so, but must leave the whole matter where the Scriptures leave it, to the prudence, philanthropy, and good sense of God's children, each man having a right to do as to him shall seem good. These societies must appeal not to church courts, but to church members. When they proclaim principles that are scriptural and sound, it is not denied that the church has a right, and under certain circumstances may be bound, to bear testimony in their favour, and when, on the other hand, they inculcate doctrines which are infidel, heretical, and dangerous, the church has a right to condemn them. In conformity with these statements, the General Assembly has no hesitation in cordially approving of abstinence from intoxicating drinks as a matter of Christian expediency, according to the words of the Apostle in Romans 14.21, it is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak, and in expressing its affectionate interest in the cause of temperance, and would recommend to its ministers and elders who have become connected with the temperance societies, to use every effort to prevent the introduction of any other principle as the ground of their pledge, and to throw around these institutions those safeguards which shall be the means of rescuing them from the excesses to which they are liable from influences opposed to, or aside from, the gospel of Christ. End of Societies for Moral Reform by James Henley Thornwell